While you can use a multimeter to test out a lot of things happening with your battery, it works out really well if you have something that's specifically designed to test out your battery and this top down battery tester seemed to be something that I was going to be able to get into. I'm going to go through and show you my experience with this guy and while it kind of works, it doesn't leave me with that warm and fuzzy feeling inside. Let's get after it. So Top Don has a lot of automotive equipment that's on the market and they seem to have pretty fair reviews, although most of their products are less expensive. And I thought that this guy, which is just a new battery tester they had on the market, was going to be something that would work out for me. It does have a printer on it that I figured I'd never use. And although at this point in time, I do like the printer and I'm gonna show you everything that happened here, but I'm gonna to try to quickly go through my experience with this. First, they have a 2015 GMC pickup truck that's been sitting for way too long and it's just sitting outside we're trying to go through and figure out how we can fix the brakes but the battery is also something that I'm a little bit nervous about because I get slow cranks once in a while not all the time so I wanted to hook up this top down tester and do a basic battery test and when I went through this I got a battery of good but recharge it, which makes no sense because it's been on the charger for a while and it's actually been driven a little bit. So I'm thinking, yeah, something's a little weird. So I wanted to do a cranking test on this. The cranking test came through with normal voltage and the cranking volts dropped to 9.9 .9 volts with 4.6 seconds worth of cranking time. 9.9 .9 volts is getting to the point where I mean, you get below nine and a half, you know you're really bad, but this is weird. And I'm still thinking, why is it still a good battery? But moved on to a charging test. And this charging test will actually look at what's happening with the battery voltage. And then you rev it up to 2,500 RPMs for five seconds and then come back and it'll tell you, you know, the loaded, no loaded test and then your ripple between. So we came up with 14.99 for no load and 14.75 for loaded. That is high. So it came through and said charging, you know, charging is high. So we could have an alternator issue inside there also. Uh, so I thought, well, it's interesting information. I'm going to move out to our plow truck. This uh, has a 750 cold cranking amp battery in it. And I'm a little nervous about this one because I'm getting some slow starts also. And we're not even at the point where it's cold. Last thing you want in a plow truck is to have a battery that doesn't start the vehicle when you're in the middle of a storm. So went through this guy and I had a little bit of trouble with this one, getting it to work correctly. And I was able to do a battery test and it came back with a uh, replaced battery, which, I kind of expected, I expected it to say replace battery on both. Um, but then I tried to do some of the other tests and it said check tester, which that really led me to, okay, is this guy really working or not? I'm gonna bring you back and go through some of these uh, printouts just to show you what I have and why I'm really not comfortable. When I first purchased this unit, I thought, you know, the printer is going to be of no use to me, but actually having these little printouts allows me to analyze what I'm looking at and it, it helps me look at do I trust this unit or not. First on this 2015 Chevy truck was just drove the other day for quite some time. So I would expect the battery voltage to be good in the charge percent, it's saying 55%. 12.33 is still within range, I'll, I'll give that. But uh, it says health 55%. Measured cold cranking amps 485, which is 74%, I wrote that 74 in there, of the 650. So interesting, the internal resistance is 6.18 milliohms. I'll go with it. Maybe it needs a good long recharge, but I'm doubting it because of everything else that's going on. Cranking test, you can see here, dropped to 9.9 .9 volts, which isn't too bad, 4.6 seconds. And then our charging test, here's where we were high at 14.9 volts and loaded 14.75. I don't know if I trust it. I need to get my multimeter out and I shouldn't have to get my multimeter out to check that, but that's what I'm going to have to do because of my trust issues. Here is our plow truck. This is a Ford 6.2 liter. 
uh, charge 83%, 12.5 volts. I love that, that's great. Um, health, 67%, measured cold crank amp, 615, which is 82% of the 750 that it is, and its internal resistance is 4.84 milliohms. So it actually, this battery sounds better than this one by a long shot, and it told me to replace it. Now, if someone else out there knows the difference in what I'm looking at or why, I'd happy to be you know, schooled on this. But to me, just looking at these two reports, if I had to pick a battery, that is the battery I'm picking. And it's telling me to replace the battery rather than just charge the other one. So frustrating to say the least. So I'd probably have a little bit more confidence in this unit if I didn't get the check tester warning every once in a while and it not work. That to me is something that's not making me happy with my purchase and in fact I'm going to contact these guys and say hey I think I got a bad one. This would be great if it actually worked all the time and gave me the confidence that everything was right. I'm sure that maybe there is some issue in uh, me reading these two slips as to why one it just needs to be charged and why one needs to be replaced but unfortunately they're both charged. So this tells me that this unit is giving me information that I still have to adapt and use my own knowledge with, which is still good, but I could have done this with a multimeter for the most part. So I definitely don't want to hook this guy up to the Corvette behind me because the issue we're having there is once it starts, we're getting a complete voltage drop, which, or a low voltage, which is shutting off one of the computers for a minute, voltage comes back, and it starts to pick up and run, which means that about 90% of the time we lose fire and it stalls. So I'll let you guys hear that before we go. Too bad this didn't really work that well because I was looking forward to it. In fact, this is one of those tools that I just couldn't sleep last night. I'm like, I'm gonna figure a lot out tomorrow and get things done. It is what it is. If you guys have any knowledge on this, leave it down below in the description. I'd greatly appreciate it. Otherwise, we'll take it what it's worth and it's probably not working that well. Thanks for sticking with us, guys. We appreciate your time. Give us a like in this video, subscribe to the channel. As always, have a great day.